What's going on, Phantom Force and Cosmox fans alike? This is Phantom Base coming at you with our blinding lights. There we go. That's better. Um, coming at you with our week five team prep for the APA. Your Co New York Cosmox are taking on the Crim taking on Crimson City, aka Crimson Seabed, and their Detroit Steel Wings. Now, this team should appear directly above my head in exactly right about now. And as you can see, <laughs> quite a threat we've got going on here. Uh, he's got the Sand Core of Drill Tyranitar, but he made Tyranitar. He went Mega Tyranitar. He's got Latios Arcanine, Gyarados, a nice Intimidate Core, uh, Breloom, Miss Magius, um, Aromatis, Cloister, Golbat, and Electivire. Now, this made for some interesting prep indeed, because, um, uh, as you know, my team. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start. I think next video I'm gonna have to start posting my my team on the side as well. But anyway, we've got uh, Z Crystal Mons by the way, Latios and Gyarados, which is very interesting. Um, my team is Thunders Incarnate, Top of Feeny, Mammoth Swine, Bronzong, Umbreon, Scolipede, Flygon, Mega Hair Across, Go Goat, Aerodactyl, and Zangoose, with uh, Flygon and Thunders Incarnate being my Z Crystal users. Um, now, first thing I want to go ahead and mention, because I didn't mention it in last week's video, especially after all the feedback I got on my um my team builder with A-Drive and a couple of others. Uh, by the time this goes up, the battle has already happened. <laughs> okay. That means that I have already figured out what his sets are. I already... We record these prep videos before the battle. I, the battle has already occurred by the time I upload this. Like, today is Sunday. This battle goes up the in one week. This team prep goes up on Saturday of this week. There are six days before this battle goes up. Before this, before this video goes up, just keep this in mind, <laughs> okay? I, I can I can clearly tell what what his sets are when the battle happens. I I'm clearly not aware of his prep before the battle happens. So just get that out of the way. Now, speaking of prep, this team is quite interesting for mine because I his Sancor horrifies me. Excadrill is kind of a problem. I say that because I, I have a decent amount of checks to it, but like I don't like having to deal with it, you know? It's it's a, it's an, it's a tough mod to, to deal with because it's got a really good attack stat. He's kind of deceptively fat. Base 110 HP is nothing to sneeze at. Mega Tyranitar is fat as crap. Hits like a truck at the same time. Base 164 attack. It's coming close to rivaling my Mega Heracross's attack. Now, uh, luckily, I do believe that there's a pretty even matchup here. Like, there's no really, it's not really swayed in one team's favor or another. However, I do kind of have some, uh, I don't, I don't want to say gimmicks, but I do have some, uh, some heat prepared. Oh, looks like, alright. So Crimson is joining his team at the moment, so as soon as this video is over, we're going to have the battle. So let's go ahead and, uh, I'm going to message him back real fast and tell him recording team prep now. All right, so, so we're gonna do this in our uh, live emulated s setup like we normally do. Um, I'm gonna take my time with this. I'm gonna really explain the sets that I've got because I'm really, really proud of this team. Now, uh, the first thing I, I notice when I look at his team is, um, outside of Aromatis, he has no switch ins to Mega Heracross. <laughs> However, I do see an Intimidate Core, which could be problematic for my team. So, I'm going to go over the team in the order that I developed it. And I know this is going to sound funny because you're going to see me throw up like five mods at once and none of them are going to be complete. But that's okay because this is how I built it. So when I look at his team, obviously I see no switches to make a hair across. So clearly, hair across has to come this week. We are bringing Kirito. I believe he picked him with the guts. It doesn't really matter what he's got. Like, Moxie is okay. It doesn't really matter. We we don't have the GBA rules, sadly. But, uh... So, yeah. A new Heracross was a thing that I wanted, and I also knew that I wanted um, these three moves. I wanted Low Kick, I wanted Pin Missile, and I wanted Rotten Blast. That's all I knew so far. Now, uh... Spreads, nothing. Didn't know anything about that. Now, the next mods I knew I'd come up with instantly were Mammoth Swine, Okay, we're going with Thick Fat Set. I believe that's what we're going with. Yeah, we're going with Thick Fat Set. And you are male. Okay, next up we had uh, Tapu Fini. With Leftovers. 
and we also had Umbreon. Shiny male because yeah, leftovers. You're called fat. And the last mod that I knew right off the bat, I literally knew like all of these mods right off the bat. It was Thunderous Incarnate. Now you're probably wondering why they're gonna bring you Thunderous. Okay, now I'm gonna go back and track I'm gonna backtrack a little bit. Because as soon as I threw Thunderous on here, I knew exactly what I wanted out of him too. Kaiba here. Kaiba here is going to be a defiance set, okay? With Thunder Punch, Super Power, Crunch, and Bulk Up. Actually, no, I didn't know they wanted Bulk Up at the time. Originally, I was going to have, like, U Turn, or I was going to have, um. I can't, actually can't remember what I was going to bring as the last move, but I decided, like. I almost went Defog, but, like, this last move was up in the air. So. Now. Let me explain to you a couple of things. First off, as far as spreads, I've noticed something about Crimson's prep in that he does not, he he only speed creeps max, what if somebody runs max speed, which is how normally it's a good idea to prep. But I'm thinking, okay, since he consistently does this, I'm actually going to creep his creeping, okay? So follow my logic here. So if I invest 180 Jolly into this uh, Thunderous, I can invest the rest into attack, 68 in HP and the rest of unwasted EVs into bulk. Now, uh, what does this do? This allows me to creep a Miss Magius and a Latios creeping my Flygon because that's what they're going to creep. That's the that's the closest benchmark behind them. Because I have nothing else below after base 100. The next thing up is Thunderous and then um, Scolipede and Aerodactyl, all of which are past his fastest mods. So. If he's going to run Scarpers, I can't do a thing about that, but, um, yeah, if he's going to run Scarpers, I can't do a thing about that, but, um, yeah, so, we are running this particular spread because we are going to outspeed him creeping my, um, my, um, what you call it, my, my Flygon, because that's what, I feel like that's what he's going to creep, um, it's, it's the next benchmark down, so, that would mean Latios would be hitting 168 because Flygon hits 167. Miss Magus would be hitting the same thing. So we hit 169 to outspeed them. And this will afford us a little extra bulk, which could really play factor in later. Um, now, uh, this Thunder set, I knew also I wanted Fight Team MZ. Okay. And as soon as I threw that on there, I looked at his team and saw a Magnetar, which meant that I actually wanted to run bulk up. Because if I could get two bulk ups up, I actually live a. Um, I live a stone edge from an adamant. Uh, I think it's even. I think I've calculated it to be an adamant plus one uh, stone edge, and we kill back with superpower 100% of the time. This also means that uh, we can turn around and not, we not only don't care about the intimidates, we benefit from the intimidates. So Gyarados, um, Arcanine. He won't switch in Gyarados on us, but he might switch in Arcanine, going for like uh, I don't know, might be a little bit fatter. You know, so um, that's that's the whole the whole point of this is that we're going to run this particular spread because Thunder Punch is good stab. It allows us to hit um. It allows us to hit his uh, first off Gyarados incredibly hard. Um, it allows us to hit his Cloister. It allows us to hit his Golbat, and pretty much anything else that it doesn't hit. Anything else that it hits neutrally is going to be really good. Um, Superpower, Excadrill, Tyranitar, uh, freaking Cloister if we catch him on the switch. Uh, Electivire, because Electivire is a problem if I don't predict him to come in. Crunch is also a pretty fail-safe move against things like, um... Actually, Thunder Punch is really good against Aromatisse, because that's really the only thing I can hit with. Crunch is for things like Miss Magius and Latios. At plus one, I one-shot Latios, and I one-shot Miss Magius. I can also two-shot Electivire, which is really, really good. Um, and like I said, this speed is really important, because it allows us to, um creep is creeping and it really gives us a, a, a nice affordable amount of bulk that I can I can afford to have and if he doesn't um, if he doesn't if he decides to go max speed for whatever reason I mean that's cool I've still got ways to check those mods Miss Magus isn't gonna do crap to my Umbreon and um, I'm actually going to go into let's see right now I'm gonna save Umbreon and uh, top of Fini set for later because they're actually what I came up with last even though I knew I wanted them on the team instantly so 
The next Pokemon was like, alright. I need a way that if I can't get into Thunder safely on Gyarados, I need a way to be able to handle Gyarados. So, we decided we're going to go with Mamoswine here. An expert belt set. With Thick Fat, we're running. And this set is so cheeky, but it works. It's going to work so well. We're running Substitute. We're running Freeze Dry. We're running Stealth Rock. And we're running EQ. And I love how this... Asking me for a physically defensive set, I'm like, no, I'm not gonna fist tough at Mammoth Swan. But here's what we are gonna run. We're running uh, max attack. We're running 188 in speed. This is the one time we don't creep anything because I, I felt that uh, I would still like to be able to have the uh, the bulk here. Let me put 36 in defense. I know we're wasting four EVs, but it's because we're running a naive nature. So uh, if we put four in here, it doesn't change anything. So I'd rather just leave it alone because I don't want I don't want uh even I don't want even over HP because he's got things like Breloom with uh not only does he have Breloom with Leech Seed he's got um other stuff that can potentially be a problem so especially things like Super Fang um Super Fang Golbat could be a big issue so I would really like to make sure that I can take um, <laughs> I can be above half if he goes for Super Fang anyway so. What does this set do? This set 100% lures in Gyarados. Okay, let me, let me explain this to you. This set every time lures in Gyarados. If I'm behind a sub before Gyarados comes in, that's even better because I don't need the priority this week. Okay, he's going to be running. Um, if he's going to be running Breloom, he may run a Choice Scarf. I've seen him do it before, um, which can be a problem. And Mach Punch Spam is decent against my team. I say that like I don't have Tapu Fini. Or thunderous, or <laughs> air across. It's really not that good against me, but um, because I don't have a ghost, he's, he can afford to do that. Um, this set, in particular, one, it outspeeds max speed Tyranitar. That's important. Um, which also means that it can outspeed. Um, if I recall correctly, it outspeeds. Um, no, sorry, it outspeeds max speed Adamant Tyranitar, meaning it also outspeeds, and it's also creeping max speed Breloom. Um, I don't think he's going to run Jolly Tyranitar if he brings it. He's going to run it Adamant because he wants the damage output. And that means that I can afford to, to kind of to play around with this a little bit. And Tyranitar can't one-shot us anyway with this bulk investment. And we do um, one-shot it with Earthquake. So even if he is faster than us, especially that would mean he's Jolly. Which means that he's not going to be doing nearly enough to us to do any damage. And it makes Asuna, or it makes um, Tapu Fini and Umbreon much more valuable. As far as switching into it, taking it, and passing wishes preventing status, all that other good stuff. So, this special attack investment allows us to, uh, I believe it allows us to one-shot Gyarados after rocks with Freeze Dry. Also allows us to do around 40% to an Eviolite physically defensive Golbat, which is great because I have no other way to hit it other than Freeze Dry. Um, like I said, this thing is a 100% lure for Gyarados. If we can sub up on Gyarados, um, I also don't need this thing to check Latios. I've got Umbreon for that, and Latios can't touch me. Latios doesn't get. Da I don't think Latios gets dazzling gleam like um, like Latias does. So, in that regard, Umbreon is a great switch into it. Um, we can also switch into it with Tapu Fini. So really, we can pivot between the two, uh, between its two attacks. It's probably gonna have Thunderbolt for Tapu Fini or Energy Ball, which means that I can switch into it pretty freely with um. Umbreon, if he goes for that, if he's got something like Focus Blast, we can go on top of Fini. The pivot, we can really pivot around his team pretty well. Um, and if he can switch up moves, that means uh, Thunder is probably going to outspeed, which means that we can turn around and if we can get a Defiant Boost, we can kill things with it. So, like I said, we don't need the special defense investment because we're not going to be taking hits from that side anyway. We're going to be switching out most of the time. Uh, but like I said, this thing, 100% lure for um, Gyarados. We can set up a sub on it as it comes in we can click freeze dry if you take if we ha already have rocks up um, and if we don't already have rocks up we can get rocks up on Gyarados and switch out to something accordingly but if he just has a dragon dance in our face then we just click freeze dry because we can set up rocks as he clicks dragon dance if then we click freeze dry and then we can go in and if he lives uh, we can go into um, uh, some of the things to handle it. We have foul play on Umbreon, so it's a really easy way to scare him out. And plus one Gyarados isn't to kill my Umbreon. I'll show you the spread in a little bit. But for right now, 
this is the set we have. I'm really proud of this set because it really handles this team really well. Um, Earthquake, one shots, uh, Arcanine if I don't have an int Intimidate boot uh, drop, one shots to Excadrill, one, one shots to make it to Ranatar, um, after Rocks, I believe. Uh, Aromatis had actually two shots, Aromatis if I recall correctly. Um, Cloyster is another issue, which I actually do have an answer for. Um, Golbat is, like I said, after Rocks, I believe it's two shot by Freeze Dry. Electivire drops to Earthquake. Its physical defense is quite poor. But, um, anyway, so, after this, we decided that we were going to go and finish up, uh, Mega Heracross here. And we decided to go with Faint. I originally had Vacuum, Vacuum Wave on here until I realized that you can't have Rock Blast and Vacuum Wave on the same set of Mega Heracross. Very sad. Very not happy about that. But that's okay. Because we are running this exact spread. We're running 252, 228 here. Okay, and the rest goes into HP. This puts us at an odd number of HP once again. This allows us to speed creep Mega Tyranitar. I believe that's what we're creeping with this thing too. Yep, we're hitting the same benchmark. We're speed creeping Mega Tyranitar. We are speed creeping Umbreloom. And we can one shot both of them. Low kick one shots Mega Tyranitar. Low kick one shots Excadrill. Low kick one shots Electivire. Low kick one shots Cloyster. Okay, and here's the thing I'm expecting. If he brings Cloyster, it's going to have a sash on it to set up a shell smash and potentially, you know, kill me. However, a plus two, sh plus two Ice Shard does not kill me, and Faint actually has higher priority, so in the end, Faint works out better than Vacuum Wave would have. Even if Vacuum Wave only does, um, or even if Vacuum Wave actually did more damage. I'm actually going to calc it, though, because I really want to know. Um, Heracross. I actually didn't do this. I just threw Faint on there last second. Um, we're going to put uh, Faint on... Let's go Cloyster. Shell Smash Sweeper. Okay, so Faint is 11 to 13%. But see, if we get a low kick off, low kick to... Low kick to an offensive Cloyster to 107 to 126. So, even if you invest, like, max defense in that thing, um... If he goes for Shell Smash at minus one, um, we're, first off, we're gonna put him at plus two attack, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna show, show you this real fast. Ice Shard, okay, plus two Ice Shard does max 40%. Okay, so low kick, doing between, if we can get him down to Sash, great. If not, Faint actually will pick him off, because the min it can do is 14%, and the minimum we can do with low kick, if he's got max defense, is, um, is uh, 90 percent so yeah I knew there's a reason I cocked it that way anyway getting off track continuing on with life uh, this set allows us to one shot a lot of his team okay like I said low kick takes care of Excadrill, Tyranitar, um, freaking Cloyster, Electivire, Arcanine one shot by Rock Blast after an Intimidate drop after Rocks, Gyarados same thing uh, Breloom is one shot by Pin Missile. Ladio is one shot by Pin Missile. Golbat, two shot by uh, Rock Blast. So I catch him on the switch, and if he takes rocks, he actually dies to Rock Blast. Miss Magius drops to Rock Blast. Um, Aromatis is the only thing that lives two hits from Mega Heracross. Rock Blast does max like 40%, I want to say. It actually chews it really, really well. But after rocks, we can do a huge chunk of damage to that thing. And we do have answers for that thing once again. So. And see, as you as you can see, uh, as I watched one of Crimson's battles the other day um, against uh, Silver Smasher, I believe he had Aromatis pretty much sit in front of his team at the end and just win, which is really kind of a scary thought for me. I was like, I need an answer for Aromatis, so I thought we can go Bronzong. That, that'd be a good set, but in the end, it loses to Mega Tyranitar because Crunch is still blowing me away. And if he runs a slow Mega Tyranitar, it, it Gyro Ball's not doing enough to it because it's got really high defense. Um, Excadrill also can potentially beat it as well. Um, Arcanine, Walls, Bronzong every time. So there's really no reason for me to bring Bronzong because I've got another great offensive mod here with Scolipede. We're bringing a Life Orb Scolipede. I tossed it between um, Life Orb and Black Sludge. I tossed it between um, a few things on it, really. I tossed it between... Uh, one set, I had, at one point I had, um, Protect Photon Pass, Poison Jab, and Earthquake on it. Or Spikes, actually. But, um, that set got walled by Excadrill. I really couldn't afford to have, and a lot of his other team. So I decided to go more offensive for this one. I decided, because we're allowed to this season, I'm going Sword Stance, Earthquake, Poison Jab, and Rock Slide. Rock Slide is 
intentionally for the Gyarados, as well as the Golbat, because we can do a lot of damage at plus two. At plus one, we um, have a chance to one-shot Gyarados from full, because I'm factoring in the Intimidate drop after I go for Sword Stance. So, um, and if I get Sword Stance plus the Speed Boost, and we're in good shape, we can start running through his team. Um, this thing could be a, either a late game win condition, or it could just help me break the team down for um, Thunderous or even Mega Heracross. Like, this team, just after, just to give you an idea, plus one Poison Jab uh, blows away Aromatisse. Um, because I'm factoring in the Intimidate drop. Uh, plus one Rock Slide actually kills Miss Magius. Um, I expect Cloyster to be dead before I, before I bring this thing in. Um, Latios uh, dies to a plus two Poison Jab. Excadrill dies to a neutral Earthquake, actually because of life orb and that's why I decided to run this particular spread on it so that we could guarantee that we get those kills and once again like I said crimson has been known to scream speed creep only max speed so I'm running yeah I'm running 172 in speed I believe that is yeah 172 in speed we're running uh, 252 in attack we're running 76 Four and four with a jolly nature because we have to. I want to creep is creeping. So we're going to be outspeeding Latios. And um, if he switches to Latios for whatever reason, I can't really understand why he would. And, I'm, he catch, and I catch him on a sword stance. And if he's scarfed, we're going to outspeed him the next turn. And we will kill with Poison Jab because plus two, we actually nuke that thing. Um, yeah, so that's the whole point of the Skull of Pizza, is literally just to help break down his team, and in particular to handle the Aromatisse. Because with this bulk investment, I believe we actually do live um, two... I want to say at least one. We live one Psychic, and we can get a Sword Stance up and just Poison Jab it to death. If he rings in Excadrill, then uh, after we get to plus two, we outspeed it, and we click Earthquake and kill it. Our Life Orb damage is going to start racking up. That's why we have decided to go into our defensive mods now, and the first thing I thought was, I need Wish on Umbreon. I need... Foul play on Umbreon because Dragon Dance or potential. Actually, this two shot Latios, which is fun. Um, we also need it for offensive. Um, like if he gets it brings an SD Excadrill for whatever reason, we actually do live with the spread I have planned. Protect and the last move I was up in the air about for a little bit, but I knew the spread I wanted. We we're going 244 in HP. We're going uh, 116 in defense, 148 spadef. We're calling an impish nature because this allows us to take a plus two earthquake from Excadrill and a plus one stone edge from Mega Tyranitar, and we can wish protect up on them. Um, yeah, sandstorm damage can be a thing, but we can we can mitigate that a little bit. We can also baton pass out on things. Um, Pretty sure that was why. And also, our special attack investment allows us to live a Draco Meteor from Latios and kill with, or and then hit back with Foul Play. And I think we kill after Rocks, if I recall correctly. If I recall correctly. Now, the last move I decided to go put on this thing was Baton Pass, and this was only because I wanted to be able to potentially get myself some good pivots because he's going to have to switch around and lumber out a little bit. He's going to have to go into offensive threats and I can easily check them with things that come in. We can also take the baton pass. Like if we go for baton pass and he brings in an intimidator, both of his intimidators don't really handle my top of Feeny very well, which is why I'm bringing the top of Feeny set that I am. I'm actually bringing, crazily enough, a fully physically defensive top of Feeny because this allows me to wall his intimidators, and I can always baton pass the minus attack into this thing without fear of losing attack in any of my offensive threats. All my offensive threats are physical this week, which is really funny, but um, it's okay because really his team doesn't handle physical threats very well. Um, Top of Feeny is my dedicated check to Mega Mega Tyranitar, first off. Surf Moonblast, uh, Nature's Madness, and Haze. Haze is for like all of his setup sweepers, and really none of them can one shot me, which is really nice. So I can use this to my advantage. We one shot Latios, we can one shot uh, Excadrill, I believe, after some prior damage. I believe I know Nature's Madness in particular is for things like uh, Aromatisse, for things like um, because I don't, I can't taunt Aromatisse, but I can prevent it from setting up Calm Minds, which could be an issue. Calm Mind Aromatisse is actually kind of a scary thing for me to think of when I was prepping, so I decided to to tech on something that can handle it. So, all this to say, uh, this is the team. 
Uh, I'm really, really proud of this. Um, if I can use this defensive backman to really just prevent him from running through me and use my tech that I've got on here to really handle his threats properly, I think we'll come out with a, a good solid win this week. So, um, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the battle. Bye, guys.